everyone and welcome back. I am Ruchi Lace and today we are again on TriHackMe platform. In this video we are going to solve a new challenge. Its name is DAV and as you can see I have already opened it. Since I previously solved it the flags have already been submitted. There are two requirements to find the user flag and the root flag. No other info is available here so we have to identify a way to get them. Let's go. I turned on the machine and we now have an IP to start from. The first step is to scan this IP in order to find out what ports are opened and what services are running. In order to perform this scan, I'm going to use Nmap. I will also add the dash "-a", flag because I want to get the full info. For the port uh, uh, option, I will leave it default because uh, for the moment at least I want to scan only the, the most common ports. Okay, oh, it's already done. Uh, we have now the results for our NMAP scan. Uh, as you can see from the output, port 80 is opened and HTTP is running there. Also, the version of the service is uh, Apache 2.4.18. Let's open this uh, web page and see what we got there. Okay. Copy. Oh. It looks like Apache's default page, so nothing really interesting. Maybe we can find something useful in its source code. Let's have a look. Oh, it seems we don't have anything here. Since there is only this default page and uh, no other menu or something else, the next step is to perform uh, an enumeration. Maybe it, uh, it will reveal something. For this enumeration step, I will use a tool named GoBuster. We need to pass a couple of arguments. Uh, the type of thing we are looking for, the URL of the page, and the word list to scan. Uh, now, let's start it. So, I'm going to use GoBuster. I will add dir because I want to scan for directories or uh, files. Dash u is for a URL is this one and for word lists I will use a common uh, word list yeah. okay oh our enumeration with GoBuster finished and we have the results it looks like we found uh, valid URL. Although it doesn't have the status 200, we should check it. Our previous search returned the result, so let's examine it. So we have to add the path found. Well, not that easy as we might have thought. It asks for username and password, which of course we don't have. Honestly, I haven't heard of WebDev before and I didn't find this directory in any of my previous performed enumeration for other challenges, so I started searching some info about it. WebDev acts like a sort of HTTP extension and it uses port 80 or 443 depending on what is used between HTTP or HTTPS. Some things you can do with WebDev are creating or deleting files or editing the, exist the existing ones. You can think of it like an FTP server, but with extra capabilities and which runs on the same port with the web server. In the description of the video, you will see a link to an article which provides you more details about WebDAV. While searching for info, I also found an article where there were the default credentials for WebDAV, but some other uh, useful info like uploading a file to the server. I will put uh, the link in the description for this one too. Let's log in with those credentials. I tested them before and they worked. Um, to do this, I will use a tool named Cadaver. We need to pass as parameter the link we try to access. So it would be something like this. Cadaver and HTTP 10.10.2.3.5.10.slash.webdev. Okay, so now among those credentials, uh, the username is WAMPP. The password is XAMPP. Okay, 
as it can be observed, I successfully logged in. Now, since we can upload files on this web server and uh, access them after, I have prepared a PHP reverse shell. Honestly, whenever I see the possibility of uploading files to a web server, I immediately think at reverse shells. Uh, in the description of the video, you will find a link to a site where you can get various reverse shells. Before actually accessing the, uh, the reverse shell, I must open a new terminal and start netcat on it. I chose port 1234, but it can be any other free port as long as you set it also in the reverse shell. Netcat will listen on the chosen port and as soon as our uploaded reverse shell will be accessed, we will get the connection. So, open a new terminal. Okay, and this one stays here. Now I'm going to upload the reverse shell I prepared. Okay, succeeded. Now we are going to access the reverse shell. Okay, so log in again. Okay. And here we have, we, get, we got the connection, and um, now let's focus on the finding the flags. Let's check which user are we connected with. Okay. Good, we are www-data. Uh, I will um, do some stuff in order to spawn um, a shell. So. Python 3 Okay, and another thing in order to be able to use the clear command And, and it works. Good, we are connected with www-data, but we should verify what other users exist. So let's go to the home directory and see what we can find there. Okay. Good, um, we have here two users. One is Merlin and the other one is WAMPP. Uh, the second one is the user that uh, we use to connect to WebDAV. So this is a user related to an app. Now, uh, let's see if we can access the home page, the home directory of Merlin. Oh, okay, we can access this. And if we have a look of the files, oh, we have here the, the flag, user.txt. And something very interesting is that this file, user.txt, has read permissions for uh, user, group, but also others. So we should be able to, to access it. That's quite a bridge. Well, we were able to read the file and here we have the user flag. Quite easy. We got the first one, and now let's focus on the second one. Uh, usually, to get the first flag, we have to perform lateral, move, lateral movement and get a shell of a user like Merlin, in our case. But since we successfully connected with the default credentials for WebDAV, and we managed to read the file located in the home directory of a user while we were connected with other user, www-data, and the path to the root flag couldn't be quite different. Normally, I would have tried to get a shell for user Mar uh, Merlin and uh, then try to escalate the privileges from there. Um, however, in our case, uh, it's even easier. I checked if there are any pseudo privileges uh, that www-data has, and it has. Have a look. You can see that we can execute uh, bin cat command with sudo without any password. This means that we can read any file on the file system like we would be connected with root. Um, so 
usually the root flag is located in slash root so let's see if we can if we can list uh, the content honestly i don't think but let's see ah, okay permission denied but uh, let's make an attempt and try to execute uh, bncat with sudo and see if we have uh, if we are lucky and uh, the root flag is uh, in that uh, in that folder uh, voila here you have it we found the second flag and we completed the challenge default credentials it all started with this believe it or not this is a real issue unfortunately um, many iot devices and not only get hacked because the owners don't change the username and password and it's not only about that account that portal that website often that's only the first step as you have already seen also improper permissions it is not normal for a user like www-data to be able to access files in other users home directory always use the least privilege principle last but not least pseudo access to www-data for reading i know in some cases web pages need to read files that cannot be accessed with this user but there are solutions that solu there are solutions that can be found for this we read the flag but as well we could have read the slash etc slash shadow file which contains the hashes for the user's password have a look we'll execute again sudo main cat slash etc slash shadow and voila we have here the hashes for merlin and also for wampp take that hashes and try to crack you might even get some login credentials take care and uh, protect yourself thank you for watching and uh, see you next time bye